Hey guys, what's up Mad Season here, back with another video for you. I've just been making a ton of long videos recently, what's going on? Well, I'm back with part 3 of the cool tips and tricks series, and in this one, I got 20 more random nifty things you can do in game. Some of them are pointless and dumb, and others are actually pretty handy I think. In the last one, I mentioned how you could use the class hall teleports to quickly get to the entrance of a dungeon. This can be handy for places where there's no shortcut back. Well, some of you out there chimed in with an even better tip. After finishing your run, just make a pre-made group in the group finder, and then leap group. And that's it. You'll get a little timer, and at the end of it, you'll be teleported out to a nearby graveyard. It does take a minute, but that's a good chance to grab a drink, stretch, or watch everyone's favorite monotone World of Warcraft channel. Have you ever been in a queue for like an hour? You're sitting there waiting and waiting, and you have to AFK for just a minute, and when you come back, you find that you missed it. A way to prevent this from happening is by queuing up for a scenario. You can do the class trials from an NPC in your order hall, the Pandaria scenarios located right here in the Veil of Eternal Blossoms. When you're inside of these, it'll actually pause all of your queues so you can enter one, take a dump or whatever, come back, leave the scenario, and then your queue will resume from where you left off. Now, I know what you're going to say next. So, we all love the garrisons in Draenor. You can get some pretty darn good items from those missions such as mounts and toys, but sometimes, it can be a hassle to hearth there and back just to check them. I mean, we're talking tens of seconds here. Luckily, I have just the answer. Instead of hearthing there and back, just run this script so you can bring up your garrison info window so you can check anywhere at any time. This works anywhere in the world, and it allows you to quickly see if you got the mission that you were waiting for. You can also put it in a macro if you want, so you can have it at a click of a button. I always like to slip in a little exploration in these. I'm sure most of you have seen this by now, it's pretty old, but this is the old Outland. Back before the Burning Crusade, Blizzard messed around with a prototype Outland, sort of experimenting with the design. They put it in the Deadmines map, hidden away outside of the instance, but players can reach it with some shenanigans. I'll show you how to get there, but note that if you do try it yourself, do it on a PTR server. I don't think that Blizzard really cares about exploration, I never heard about anyone getting in trouble with it, but the PTR servers are sort of like the Wild West. It seems like anything goes here, and I don't think there are any GMs. Heck. I've seen people speed hack freely on these, so I think exploration is probably fair game too, so that's where I do all of my exploring. But to get to this place, first is you have to be a demon hunter so you can glide. And next, you want to lodge yourself against this wall here, right on this red pipe, right at the beginning of the dungeon, and after that you want to use some sort of growth item. Whoa, put your pants back on there buddy. No, I'm not talking about those spam emails you get. I'm talking about something that enlarges your character, so you sort of melt into the wall. This can be a Dark Moon Firewater, an elixir of giant growth, whatever. After that, you want to relog, and when you log back in, try to jump through the wall as I did here, glide immediately, do a few dashes, a vengeful retreat, some more gliding, and you should just barely make it through, but you have to be really fast with it. If you miss, you'll get stuck in a disconnect cycle until your character resets to your hearth location. So, here you can see the outside of the dead mines is quite pretty, lots of nothingness, and sure enough, if you head away southeast, you'll come across the original design for the Outland. It's quite the sight to see. You got sparkly stuff everywhere, these floating crystals with trees growing on them. You also have a giant pit with upside down Dalaran bubbles underneath the rocks. 
like I said, this is all over YouTube I'm sure, but here's a 2018 video on how to get there since the old way you needed a glider and as far as I know you can't use those inside of dungeons anymore. So the demon hunter is the only way now. A cool little spot I think. Shadowmourne is a legendary and the Wrath of the Lich King expansion. It has a big quest chain tied to the Ice Crown Citadel raid, and in addition to the actual legendary, you can get some nifty toys, cosmetics, and even a mount. They're quite lucrative too, which makes completing the chain worth it just for the gold. Three classes can do it, and that's the Warrior, Paladin, and Death Knight. But a reason that a lot of people don't do it is because one of the parts requires multiple people. It's called Blood Infusion, and for this part, you need to have the Shadow's Edge Axe equipped, which is provided by the quest, and in the Blood Queen Lanithil boss, when she bites you and turns you into a vampire, you need to bite three people and then kill her to complete it. Now, before you take your pants off again, this is all in-game bites, unfortunately. The main problem is that each person you bite gets a debuff to where you can't bite them again. At first glance, this means that you need the help of three other people to finish it. This is where the tip comes in though. If you're a death knight, you can do it with just one other person, as long as that person is a shaman. What you do is you get bitten, and after a minute you transform, and then you bite your shaman friend. Then, your friend has to die, and once you transform for a second time, they reincarnate and you bite him again. They die once more, and then right before you transform, you battle res your friend, then you bite them a final time, and then you kill the boss. And that's blood infusion with two people. If you're a warrior or a paladin, you will need at least two other friends, and if neither of those people has a battle res or is a shaman, you'll need three. So definitely if you're a death knight, go knock out this chain, experience a bit of lore, and get some cool items while you're at it. It's actually a pretty unconventional way to make some gold since death knights start at level 55. You can do this chain at around level 100, so if you wanted to, you could just level Death Knights and do the chain and remake over and over again. If you're speedy at leveling, it might actually be pretty efficient in terms of gold making. Definitely different, that's for sure. But, you may instead be doing the Ice Crown Citadel for the Invincible Mount. It drops from the Heroic 25 Mad Mode from the Lich King, who's of course the final boss, so clearing to him every time can be pretty time consuming. A classic trick you can do is park an alt near the entrance of the raid, and after clearing up to the Lich King on your main, go to your group finder, go to create custom group with auto invite on, and then log off and switch characters. Once you're on the second character, find that group that you just made and join it, and wait until the leader passes to you. It should take about a minute. Once it does, switch to normal mode, zone in, and then switch it to heroic. You want to accept the lockout from here, and then just kill the Lich King. And from here, if you want to do it on your other characters, just rinse and repeat on your original main character, and kill him as many times as you want. So, you're basically recycling your main's cleared lockout, so you can really quickly just kill the Lich King over and over, while skipping the rest of the raid. You can do this for the Ice Crown Citadel for Invincible, Aldwar for Mimiron's Head, and Ragnaros for the Firebird. The only difference is for the latter two, is that you don't have to mess with the heroic shenanigans since those mounts drop on normal, so skip that step where you wait until the leader passes over. Just zone in right away on your alt and accept the lockout and clear. As far as I know, this used to work for Heroic Dragon Soul and a few other places, but it was nerfed in 7.3.5, either intentionally or otherwise, 
And you can't do it for heroic modes anymore, it looks like. If you have trouble getting this to work, I'll have the steps listed out one by one in the description, and a link to a thread if you need any troubleshooting. Next, we have another pretty useful toy that everyone should have, and that's because it serves as a portable mailbox. That's right, an on-demand mailbox for non-engineers. It's called the Katie Stamp Whistle, and you get it after a short quest chain where you help the postmaster sort out some mail. Yeah, the guy who's always sending you random crap in the mail to fill up your bags. To start the chain, you need to pick up a letter on the ground near the mailboxes in Dalaran. They can spawn at any one of these mailboxes. I'll have a link to this map in the description, but only one person can grab it, and it spawns every few hours, so it can be troublesome to get. Alternatively though, you can just buy it off the auction house, although they're pretty pricey. Using it starts a quest chain where you deliver some lost items to people, and at the end of it, you can do a mail sorting minigame where you have to match up the letters with the right continent. If you sort 15 letters in 60 seconds, you'll complete the chain and unlock a hard mode where you only get partial addresses, and if you sort 30 of these in 60 seconds, you'll get the stamp whistle as a toy for every character on your account, the postmaster title, and even a pet called the Melemental. This part is pretty rough though, and you have to know your geography pretty well. I'm getting a little help here from an add-on called Weak Auras that overlays all of the addresses over the correct continents. If you need this, I'll have a link to it in the description, and also to a string that you need to paste into the add-on. Next, we have some more exploration. Now, this is all over the internet as well, I'm sure, but whatever, it's still cool, so I'll include it. Feel free to skip ahead if you've seen this already. With some more growth shenanigans, you can manage to get to the old Eastern Plague Lands before the Cataclysm revamp. This one lies in the Naxxramas raid. If you go to this little green part in Saffron's room and wood yourself in, same stuff from the Dead Mind glitch, pretty much. You pop an elixir, relog, and nudge yourself forward. If you point straight out and dash, you should go right through. Now, you would think that this is an uninstanced Dragon Blight, but comparing it to the normal Dragon Blight, I wasn't able to find any similar geography. It could be a copy of the old Winter Spring Zone from Pre Cataclysm, although I'm not entirely sure. The zone itself is pretty interesting. You can find these little camps throughout the area, and even buildings, although they're of course uninhabited. As you progress further out, you can see how messed up the terrain is. You were never meant to see this side of the zone, so you can see some of the shortcuts that they did. It's pretty funny. Moving further though, you notice that the trees start turning into the ones that you can find in the eastern plague lands. And sure enough, following these trees, you'll find the old-school pre-cataclysm Eastern Plague Lands. And a lot of it is surprisingly intact. You have the old watchtowers, which used to be PvP objectives. And throughout the area, you have these old quest hubs and even buildings lying about. It's all really cool, I think. And if you head to the west, you'll see the first area of Nexramus where you first zone in. And all the way to the west is the Terradale hub in all its glory. This was another questing area infested with undead, and behind it you may recognize from my benediction slash anathema video as a gauntlet event where you had to heal and escort the peasants. The cave is blocked off in this version though. Stratholm is also mostly intact. It's really interesting seeing it with this night skyline, kind of gives you a different feel. You can explore most of it, even entering that giant building in the human area, although you do hit an invisible wall trying to enter that last room. You can also go through the undead side as well, through the streets, here's the slaughterhouse right before Rivendare, and here's Rivendare's room itself. 
and if you take a left through the gate, you can see the original planned area to zone into Nexramis. Once you were attuned, you were to go on this little platform and get teleported up to the Ziggurat, but they moved it outside since it was too annoying to clear through the entire Stratholme dungeon every time you wanted to raid. There's a lot more interesting stuff to explore, but I figured I'd leave the rest to you. It's one of the few surviving relics of classic World of Warcraft, and pretty fun to walk through and see what's intact and what's not. Probably one of the granddaddies of exploration spots. Next is, for all of you who are just starting your mount collecting, there's a few super easy 100% drop rate mounts that you can knock out in under an hour if you like. I'll go over them really quickly here for you. First, we have the Bronze Drake. You can find this in the Heroic Culling of Stratholm dungeon in the Caverns of Time. Pretty simple, just progress through the dungeon like normal, except at the end hang a left and find this alley sort of hidden away with the Bronze Drake being tortured. If you save them and take out the enemy here, you'll get the mount as a reward. There is a time limit for this, but at 110, the only way you'll fail it is if you disconnect. Just follow Arthas around and you should be good to go. And two more can be found in the Obsidian Sanctum Raid, located under the Wormrest Temple in Dragonblight. This one's also super easy. Simply zone in and kill the giant dragon in front of you, Sartharion, without killing any of the drakes on the side, and if you do, you'll pick up the Twilight Drake if you're on 25 man difficulty, and the Black Drake if you're on 10 man. And lastly, we have the Amani Battle Bear from the revamped Zulaman dungeon, which can be found in the Ghostlands in the Eastern Kingdoms. This one is actually a 90% drop rate, but I thought I'd mention it anyways. In here, you just need to complete another time trial. You need to reach the Lynx boss before he executes his prisoner. Here's a map of the whole place and the route to follow. So just go through this and kill all of the bosses along the way and when you reach the Lynx boss, free the prisoner and she'll drop you a bag that contains the mount. Alright, let's go over some more minor stuff. A general tip that can be super handy is, if you're looking for quest items or treasures that are really tiny and you're having trouble seeing them, something you can do is hit Alt-Z to hide your interface. Doing so will make any clickable items glow, which helps you track them down a little bit better. Off the top of my head, I use it for finding those mana gems in the Suramar City for that ancient mana. Some of those suckers are hidden in plain sight, so this definitely helps. For all of you Alliance out there, have you ever wondered what the fastest way to the Blackrock Mountain is? You got two choices, Stormwind and Ironforge. Well, the fastest way probably is that Grim Guzzler drill, but not everyone has that, I think. Eyeballing it, they look to be about the same distance away from the Blackrock Mountain. Maybe Stormwind is a little closer, but then again, you can't mount right away from the teleport. You don't want to waste time by checking each route, but luckily for you, that's my specialty. I did three runs of each city, using this meeting stone in the middle as the stopping point, and on average, Stormwind is about 7 seconds faster. So, the drill is top tier, second place is Stormwind, and only peasants go to Ironforge. Hopefully that saves you a bit of time. Maybe after a few hundred trips to this place, you'll have regained the time you've wasted watching this pointless video. In the Broken Shore, you have this world quest where you have to roll this barrel down a slope while dodging a stampede. A tip I'll share is to first head up to this ledge to skip a small portion of the run, and then stick to the right down here on this little ledge. If you do it right, you can skip 60% of the path and easily make it to the goal every time. And speaking of barrels, you know that totally unfun Barrels of Fun world quest? Well, you can cheese that too. Start the game once, and then once the barrels are clickable, run the following script to put raid markers on them. 
This way you don't have to keep your eyes glued to the screen, giving you more time to watch everyone's favorite monotone YouTube channel. And for every round, when they're clickable, just use a script again and it'll put the next marker on. It's pretty simple. For those of you re-rolling on a new server, if you want a quick boost in gold, there's a little trick you can do. Pets, as you may know, are account bound. You get them on your main server and you can have them on every character on your account, even the ones on different servers. So what you can do is, on this new server, is to cage a battle pet and then sell it on the auction house. Some pets do sell better than others. If you're looking for recommendations, head on over to the AQ40 raid on your main and try to get the Vesidus Globule from Vesidus. You may remember this guy from part 1 in the series. And also go for the Anubisath idol from the Twin Emperors. Those are pretty good battle pets and they sell a little bit better. If any expert pet battlers out there want to chime in with any suggestions, feel free to do so since I'm a pretty casual pet battler. Next is, I got another second saver for you. The Pandaria city is pretty handy because it has portals to basically everywhere, and a lot of people visit it for that alone. A shortcut you can take for the portal room is to not dismount, but rather make a mad dash to the balcony. Usually, you'll be able to glide right in. It depends on your latency. The more leggy you are, the better. Dang, we're almost up to like a minute in time saved in this one. Here's something that a lot of people don't know about, I think. For the Alliance, in the same city, did you know that there's a portal to Ratchet way over in Kalimdor? On the balcony right outside the city, you can find a gnome standing next to a teleporter, and if you talk to him, he'll sell you a teleport to Ratchet for 10 gold. This can be pretty handy since the Alliance don't really have good coverage of Kalimdor. This spot is kind of in the middle of everything, and can be useful if you want to go to the Wailing Caverns, raid Orgrimmar, go to Dire Mall, and so on. There isn't an equivalent for Horde players, since I guess they have Orgrimmar, which is pretty close anyways. For all of you running the Firelands raid for the mounts, or transmog or whatever, I got another time saver for you. The fastest way to run this place, in my opinion, without exploits, is to head to the Lord Ryolith, and on your way, kill enough trash until you get two horns sounded, and then kill one more pack. From there, you want to kill Ryolith, and then right outside where Shannock spawns, kill more trash until you spawn him, so that way you're not chasing him all over the place, and you can get him right when he walks out. And after doing that, head on over to Alice Razor. The lengthiest part of the run is probably the gauntlet to the spider, because if you don't stop and kill everything, you get stuck in combat. So something I like to do to save some time is when you're fighting Alice Razor, don't kill her right away. Just get her low and wait until she drops her feathers and grab two of them. After doing that, you want to quickly grab the third one and then kill her and loot her. If you kill her while you're under her, you can loot her midair. And if you do it right, you should have about 20 seconds of flight time left from those feathers. And from here, you can just fly straight to the spider lair and skip that gauntlet entirely. So you kill Belthalak and you can proceed to go through the raid like normal. It saves you a minute or two if you run it this way, which can add up over time, especially if you're trying to farm those mounts. And for all of you mount collectors out there, here's a nice tip for you. Throughout the game, there are these super rare NPCs that drop mounts. The time lost Proto Drake and Wrath, that Stone Drake and Deep Home from Cataclysm, a bunch of Draenor ones. The problem is that those mounts are heavily camped almost all the time on most servers, which makes them nearly impossible to just casually check their spawn and kill them. Well, another nifty trick is with those trial characters is that you can make them on low populated realms and search there. Everything is account wide now, so if you get something on another server like I mentioned earlier and learn it, you get it for every character on your account. So naturally, 
it's smarter to go for these rare spawns on servers that have a lower population. And to pay testament to this, I got nearly every single Draenor rare spawn mount in one hour doing this. I did have a friend help me by searching as well, but still, that's pretty nuts. So that's the Bloodhoof Bull from Nack and Nagrand, the Modeled Metal Stomper from Luckhawk, also in Nagrand, the Sunhide Grandling from Poundfist and Gorgrand, the Sapphire River Beast from Siltide and Talador, and the Swift Breeze Strider from Pathrunner in the Shadowmoon Valley. The only one I didn't get was the Great Great Tusk from Gorok in the Frostfire Ridge, but that's because I already had it, so I didn't even search for it but I'm sure I would have gotten that one had I looked for it. And like I said, this works for anything rare spawn related. For the Draenor mobs, they're going to be your levels, so I do recommend picking a tank class so you can solo them. In this footage, I had help from my friends, but you can solo them as long as you pick a tank with some self-healing. So a Blood Death Knight, a Guardian Druid, Protection Paladin probably. Any of those should be fine. But if you still have trouble, you can also just invite a friend to help you out. Typically, the servers I've had the most luck with are the RP ones since they have such a low population. Now I do understand that it's a tip that loses its power the more people know about it. That's why I didn't make a standalone video about it and sort of snuck it in here near the end. I don't imagine a ton of people will see it. But, happy mountain hunting if you do try it. Doing one more exploration here. Next, we have the Stormwind Vault. You all know the Stormwind Stockade, which is a low-level dungeon located in the bowels of Stormwind. Well, opposite of the stockade in the pre-Cataclysm version of Stormwind was a mysterious locked-up building. There were guards posted outside, but it was forever locked with these gates, leaving players mystified about what could be inside. Using some shenanigans, you were able to get through, and what laid behind was an actual instance. It's called the Stormwind Vault, and it's basically a beefed up version of the Stockades. There are two floors, many of the same rooms that you'd find in the Stockades, along with some new bigger rooms. There's nothing official, but due to this big room, it was rumored that it was planned to be a raid, or at least a high-level dungeon. If it was a raid, I imagine it would have been another 20-man or a 10-man since it's still quite small. The reason why it was scrapped is unknown, but speculation is that it's too biased towards the Alliance considering that it's in their main capital, or perhaps they didn't want unsuspecting low-level players to walk into their doom. Pretty interesting to explore nonetheless though. Alright, let's end it with a random minor tip. If you ever send a lot of gold, or just something expensive in general to your alt, always make sure that you have an heirloom attached to it. This way, the recipient has to be a character on your account, or else it won't send. So it's just a nice safety net in case you have a typo, or maybe you're on a shared server and you typed the right name but the wrong server. That happened to me once, and I lost some gold, so protect yourself by attaching an heirloom. Alright, well, there's 20 more tips for you. Hopefully you found them handy, or interesting at least. I like making these types of videos. It's fun to just talk about random bullcorn, so I hope you're enjoying it too. I'll try to come back to it soon. But anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Like the video if you liked it, take it easy, and keep those pants on. Peace. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.